I'm not going to try to convince you to use NeoVim in this video. I'm going to assume that for whatever reason, like maybe you enjoy suffering, you have decided that you want to give it a go. The problem with switching to NeoVim or Vim in general is that it destroys your productivity. It feels like being in primary school again and learning how to type and even basic tasks feel completely foreign and require a great deal of mental effort. That is until you are productive with it and then it's amazing. You feel like a wizard and you only sometimes feel like smashing your keyboard when you try to update some plugin and your editor is completely broken. So the problem is it's hard. You're going to code much more slowly for a while and so there will be a natural tendency to go back to what you are comfortable with. What I'm not going to do in this video is teach you how to use and set up NeoVim. Uh, there's plenty of fantastic content on YouTube from people like the Primogen and TJ for that. What I am going to do is show you the overall path that I took on my successful attempt at switching to NeoVim from VS Code. So step one, do I even want this? Uh, there's got to be some desire in the first place to do this. I think the idea of Vim just has to vibe with you in a certain way to actually want to go through the process of learning it all. So watch some of those YouTube videos, listen to why people love or hate Vim so much. And if you still find yourself drawn to it, then continue. So there are a million things to do and learn when switching to Vim, but you can start with just the basics by installing the Vim extension for VS Code. So this will allow you in a more familiar environment to start putting those basic Vim concepts you learned from those videos into practice and basically start learning how to walk in Vim. Things like switching between the different modes, inserting and deleting text and getting used to Vim motions. I recommend doing this on your actual projects you are working on if you can, uh, assuming you don't have a boss who is going to complain when you are suddenly working at 10% efficiency. The good thing about this step is that you can easily just switch the extension off. Spend 10 minutes a day or however long you want and then just switch back to editing normally. You will eventually reach the tipping point where you are more productive with Vim motions and you will leave it on permanently. And then that's when things really start kicking off. So you can stop here if you want, uh, just keep using VS Code with Vim bindings. That's probably the biggest value add of Vim anyway. Or if you want to dive deeper, then keep going. So at this point, I would recommend to just keep using those Vim bindings in your current editor. And then in your spare time, tinker with setting up your own NeoVim installation. This will eventually allow you to use full NeoVim in your terminal rather than just Vim bindings in VS Code. So to do this, you could just follow along with guides from people like the Primogen or TJ on getting everything set up. And I would recommend doing that, but I also spent quite a bit of time reading about general Vim concepts. So I'll link to a fantastic blog post series I used in the description. Just getting something working with NeoVim probably isn't going to be good enough because things will break. If you understand the underlying concepts at least somewhat, you'll be able to dig yourself out of holes much more effectively. And also ChatGPT is amazing at solving weird NeoVim configuration issues or even writing custom plugins or commands. So you can basically just use ChatGPT as your NeoVim mentor. So this step is kind of optional. I think I mostly did this because I originally was not intending to go full NeoVim. But basically this extension, rather than just sort of emulating Vim in VS Code, will actually use your underlying NeoVim config. So it's a great way to start playing with your setup before fully making the switch to the terminal. And again, you can stop here if you want, but I think ultimately I found this experience to be kind of buggy and inconsistent, which defeated a lot of the reason for using NeoVim in the first place. Now it's time to switch fully to the terminal. This step can also be quite hard, but you're up to the final boss now. The hard thing about this step is that now you need to deal with how you navigate throughout your project. You're going to have to do some more configuration and install some plugins to get things working the way you want. If you want to see how I have things set up, I'll link to another video I did and my config in the description. But my advice here would be to not just try to recreate VS Code in NeoVim. You'll probably run into situations where some obvious part of your workflow is hard to do in NeoVim like having files open in tabs that you can switch between. Often you can find plugins to replicate the experience you are used to, but in general, I've found it works out better to instead investigate how all of these Vim weirdos go about switching between files, because obviously that is something they also need to do. And for the final step, I would recommend that you just keep using and learning more about Vim. Whenever you run into anything that is slow or awkward in your workflow, see what other people are doing and if it can be improved. For example, a very natural way to go about deleting a block of text would be to switch into visual line mode, use J or K to select everything you want to delete, and then hit D. Or, in this case, you could just hit D, I, curly brace to delete everything inside of those curly braces. So there are tons of non-obvious things like this that end up becoming a key part of your workflow, so just keep exploring and experimenting. 
If you found this useful at all, please consider a like or subscribe before you go, and I hope to see you back here for the next video.